Now, if all of this still seems too complicated to you, let me take you down history. Let's go back to the Victorian era, the time of Queen Victoria's rule in England. She is the most famous example of hemophilia as a sexing disease. This is a disease in which the blood doesn't clot properly and hence even a tiny injury can cause excessive loss of blood. It is caused by a recessive gene located on the X chromosome, which is why we call it an X-linked disease as well. Males are more affected than females. I told you why just before. Because females have an additional X chromosome, which if it's normal, can mask this disease. There is no record of hemophilia in Victoria's ancestors. So she didn't inherit it, right? So something else must have happened. We assume that this defect happened in her genes as something called a spontaneous mutation. Mutation, what's that? I'll put it across simply. A change or a mutation of genes can happen. That may cause some defects. And most of the mutations are actually subtle. Else, you know what would happen? We may all probably end up looking like monsters because of mutation. Okay, more on mutation later. Okay, I've reserved that as a separate topic for you. Sometimes mutations merely result in a new recessive allele like you will understand soon as what happened in Queen Victoria's case. To understand how haemophilia is inherited, let's take a look at the royal family tree, okay? First, let's understand what the symbols stand for. While the circle stands for females, the squares are going to stand for males. A half circle colored in black stands for a carrier female and a black square stands for a male affected with haemophilia. And as you can see, a normal male and a normal female are going to have no colour. Now, Queen Victoria was a carrier of haemophilia. She married her first cousin, Prince Albert, and they had nine children. Of what we know of their children's genetic history, you can see that there were two daughters who ended up being carriers and one son who had haemophilia. Victoria's numerous brood intermarried with the royal houses of Europe, spreading their medical problems into Prussia, Spain, and even pre-revolutionary Russia. Prince Leopold was Queen Victoria's youngest son. And here's something interesting. Queen Victoria actually chose to use chloroform during delivery of this prince, and thus sanctioned the use of anesthesia for the first time in childbirth. Okay, let's get back. As I mentioned, Prince Leopold had haemophilia, which led to his death at the young age of 30 because of blood loss after he just slipped and fell. Anyway, after being rejected by many women he pursued because of his genetic disorder, he finally found a match in Princess Helena. Leopold and Helena enjoyed a happy, although brief marriage. In 1883, Leopold became a father when his wife gave birth to a daughter, Alice. He died shortly before the birth of his son, Charles Edward. Alice, as you can see, was a carrier and she gave birth to a son who inherited haemophilia from her. Charles, though, inherited the right genes from his parents without the mutation and was saved from the wrath of haemophilia. I gave you a few examples. And so, if you notice, there were no women in Queen Victoria's tree who were haemophiliacs, right? There were only carriers. Only the males suffered from this disease. This makes you realize that only if an affected mother passes on the unhealthy alleles to her sons and daughters, the sons are definitely going to get the disease as they get their only X chromosome from their mom and the daughters would be affected only if dad too gave them the unhealthy allele. In case dad is healthy, daughters will just be carriers. Such an affected son would further pass on his unhealthy allele to his daughters and not to his sons, right? As they are going to get his Y chromosome, not his X chromosome. So just to give you perspective, if Queen Victoria had a mutation on both the alleles, and if she married someone who was not a haemophiliac, this would have been the result. Next, what if the queen herself would have been healthy and she had married someone who was a haemophiliac? This would have been the probable result. Let's quickly summarize the main features of X-linked inheritance before we move on. One, it is crisscross inheritance. What does that mean? Father to daughter, mother to son, right? Mother to daughter will result usually in a carrier daughter unless father has also passed the unhealthy allele. Two, most of the traits are recessive. Three, such traits are more commonly seen in men than women. Four, females are mostly carriers. 
as he had two X chromosomes, among which one, if healthy, could mask the corresponding unhealthy allele. The most common examples of recessive X-linked diseases are hemophilia and red-green color blindness. I spoke about hemophilia in great detail, right? I'll close this by talking about a less deadly disorder in a lighter way called red-green color blindness. So, red-green color blindness is a condition wherein the affected person cannot properly distinguish between red and green color. Like in hemophilia, this is also caused by a recessive gene on the X chromosome. The recessive form of this gene fails to produce color-sensitive cells in the eyes, which makes the individual colorblind. Like I told you, not deadly, but would be useful to not have it, right? Especially if you want to go on a long drive. The pattern of inheritance is also going to be similar to that of hemophilia. 